Hello, everyone. I am here with Larry Tung, Director of Product Management for Record Access and Sharing. We are going to talk about the resolutions you should be making right now to prepare for 2024 when it comes to record access. Welcome, Larry. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you, Suzanne. Of course. So let's get right into it. This is, we're upon the new year. And as we all know, here at Salesforce, and I'm sure at some of your companies, new year comes with lots of things, including those sales realignments and much, much more. So Larry, as the expert on how to use our tools for record access and sharing, what should we be thinking about? I was actually thinking about this question from a customer. So maybe this is a little bit of a tangent, but I, I was reading Well Architected. And one of the things with Well Architected is we, we strongly encourage for you to go through and ensure security is set up on your objects for record access. And specifically, I got a, customer, a question from a customer and they said, how do I just extract all the organization-wide defaults, both the internal and especially for external, and ideally be able to even document mm. why we, we recommend you justify, hey, you have a reason why something is private right. or you know public read write, especially if it's external. And so unfortunately there wasn't an easy way. I looked and the sharing settings, you could perhaps right. copy and paste, put it in. Because it can be a long or it can be a long list, run. right? Like for some folks, I'm sure they're familiar. You go to the sharing settings and when you have a bunch of objects, when you have lots of packages, lots of things in there, that list is like you can't just go through and consume it in one sitting, right? <laughs> So, Susanna, you, you definitely got us there. I think one of our, uh, during Dreamforce, I've been telling customers I want to rewrite the, the sharing settings page. We aren't there yet. I'm really hopeful that we'll have something to show you perhaps in the summer. But Safe until, Harbor. Uh, you can run. Yeah. <laughs> the forward looking statements. Until then, we have this qu API query if you're interested. Uh, I use the tooling API and I was able to pull, it was almost identical to the list on sharing settings. If you set that to false, you'll actually see a little more. Some of these objects may not be available in sharing settings, meaning you can't adjust the OWD. Um, so what I did was pull the query. I got it in JSON, which I'm sure everybody <laughs> loves to look at. But uh, then I used another tool that was online to convert that to a CSV. And, you know, as Well Architected says, for your internal objects, you should only have private when you have that business case. So documenting, like you said, Larry, mm. documenting the business case of why it's private or why it's public or why it's public, re, you know, why it's whatever. And mm. then maybe putting a date, right? Like this decision was made on this date because we know sometimes these things change. Like maybe there's a reason why you changed it mm. and being able to document mm. that and have it in writing. So valuable. I love it. And I love your, your looking into, so if you think that it would be easier, if you want to do this from the sharing settings page, let us know in the comments down below if that's a feature you think that folks should be prioritizing. We'd love to hear your feedback. Is it useful? Is it okay to just do this, sort of, this query and have it external to Salesforce? What do y'all think? Let us know. So I know you have another recommendation for things we should be doing as we get ready for 2024. What else should architects be doing around this time of year? Well, I was thinking, you know, as a new year approaches, you're going to be making a lot of changes. Perhaps you're like Salesforce and you make every year, you make a lot of changes to who owns which accounts and territories. But before we get to that conversation, I want to bring you back to a video that, you know, Susanna, you helped me make in March. And this was a feature, Faster Account That's Sharing right. Recalculation. And I've been telling folks, you know, in Sandbox, it, it took Salesforce 15 minutes to create a single criteria-based sharing rule because we had so much data. And after turning this feature on, just for case and contact, we dropped that down to three minutes. Now I get it, not every customer is gonna see such a big difference in time, but there are a number of you out there. <laughs> you haven't really turned this feature on, I can tell. <laughs> it's like Santa Claus vibes. Larry can see when you're not using this product, <laughs> he can tell. Yeah, and, and I know anytime you're talking about sharing, it's like, hey, it's record security. I get it. You're like, mm, I'm not sure I want to turn it on. Just wait for Salesforce to turn it on. And, and so I get it. So that's why we turned it on in Sandbox for you for case contact and opportunity. And so far, I haven't reported. People are not, not mentioning anything to me. So hopefully everything's running just great in your Sandbox. And we would love for you to turn this on in production. We haven't gotten to it yet in your org. 
opportunity is coming early next year, probably around the March. I love break. it. Definitely a chance to like make so. sure you're aware of the feature. As Larry said, it's on in Sandbox. Get familiar with it um, and don't suffer in silence. I think some of these tips are like, you know, if it takes, if it's taking you 15 minutes or even, you know, like eight minutes to create that sharing rule, right? Don't just suffer in silence and say, oh, it's just, you know, something I have to live with. We have these tools that are going to hopefully make your life a little bit better. As you can see on the screen, we have this video available for you to explore it even further. So third thing that architects should be doing, I did a bit of a spoiler alert, but let's get to it because I think this is a really good one. What else should architects be doing with all of the, the alignments that are happening at the end of the year? Well, if you're like Salesforce, you run into this challenge every year. Like I mentioned earlier, the sales folks, they get new accounts assigned to them. You know, sales folks get promoted, they move around in the company or maybe leave. And so there are a lot of changes that need to occur on an annual basis. So our fiscal year is ending soon, right? January 31st. And our IT team has been preparing for this for whatever reasons, probably because we have a lot of data and a lot of people at the company. It takes us a significant amount of time. And we have this feature called defer sharing and especially used for large. Yeah, I learned volume. about this. We were, we so, were having a conversation you know, right earlier. I, I think a lot of us architects probably have heard about this feature because we studied it for our sharing and visibility exam. But I know that not, well, you know, again, Larry can see everything. He knows, like Santa Claus, not a whole lot of customers are actually leveraging this all the time. But I know Salesforce does, right? Yeah. So I, as you said that, I want to make it, I, I want to take a step back because it's not necessarily a bad thing if you're not using this feature or if you've never heard of it. It probably part of, part of it's on us. We didn't make a good job of perhaps making this feature easier to use and find. So um, don't feel bad if you never heard of this feature. And if you pass the sharing visibility <laughs> certification, I'm all for that. You know, more and more people making sure their orgs are secure. So this feature, defer sharing, is really for large enterprise customers. And as you're making group membership changes, and when we say groups, we're not just talking about public groups. It's really your role hierarchy, your territories. Uh, even if you're changing the ownership of who's owning a, it, a portal or community-enabled account. Uh, so you're making a bunch of these group memberships, just like Salesforce, because it's a you know new year, new you know ownership for the sales folks. Uh, or perhaps you have different business requirements that have changed, and you're making a lot of changes to sharing rules. You're deleting a whole bunch. You're creating some new ones. And the last use case is probably one that you're also not going to do too often. You you acquire a company, or you're uh, taking some systems. And now you're moving all of that data into Salesforce. And perhaps you're moving a lot, like millions of records into Salesforce and the organization wide default set to private. So, you know, that whole process can take a right. long time. So what we recommend then is to use this feature. And so, you know, I mentioned earlier, maybe we don't do a good job of um, helping you find this feature because you actually have to submit a support case. Who wants to do that, right? After you talk to support, uh, they'll turn the feature on for you. And then you need to then give a permission to, to whoever your administrator or developer who's going to be uh, using this feature. So once you put that permission set and assign it to the right person, you can use the feature. I highly recommend you test this in a full copy sandbox um, just to make sure it's working as you expect and the time frames are what you expect. In our documentation, if you've been reading our enterprise scale best practices, we talk about def having a defer maintenance window, and you can then see and set up this defer sharing calculations page. It's really referring to two things. One is you can suspend or pause group membership calculations, and the other piece is sharing rule calculations. So we're not stopping or suspending everything possible. It's really around two features, group membership and sharing rules. And so for a customer who likes Salesforce, you're going to make some big changes. You might uh, suspend group membership or mm -hmm. just sharing mm -hmm. rule. And that can be problematic. You're a 24 by 7 call center and you have sharing rules granting access to people. Um, if you pause it, now new records come in or you're editing records. Maybe those individuals don't get access immediately because the sharing rules is paused. But if you're making these big, big, big changes, there's sometimes uh, event to use this mm -hmm. feature. I can imagine 
I can imagine you, if it's like Salesforce, right? Mm -hmm. You have these these windows where you're going to be doing this and being able to shave off hours from mm -hmm. that downtime, the plan downtime, I can imagine is really valuable. Mm -hmm. I don't think our company uh, could live without this feature. <laughs> At least maybe we need some new enhancements, but I was told we do this more than once a year. Um, our IT team um, sometimes pauses group membership a couple of times. Um, maybe once a quarter and then um, sharing rules at least once a year, if not twice. Uh, so we're a heavy user of this. But like you said, Susanna, I started a survey and so far I haven't gotten too many uh, uh, feedback about they're telling me, you know, the sharing rule recalc is really fast. And I was saying, "Woo, that's great. That means our features are working. We're scaling to your data volumes. But I've also heard there's other customers who tell us mm -hmm, things can take mm. some time. So so we essentially have this whole process, right? You suspend, you make all the changes, then you resume. And then finally, you got to recalculate. Do not forget to recalculate because that then gives access based on the rules you have. Because remember, you, you pause things. So there's a window of time where people are not necessarily getting the access they should. So it's really key to press that recalculate button after. So as we're talking, that's the piece. I'm really looking for some feedback. Perhaps your sharing will recalc or your org realignments, they, they, maybe they only take an hour and everything's good, then that's great. That means our features are scaling to your record volume. Um, but then there might be some of you who go, you know what, we have to wait like eight hours or 12 or 16. And that's a long time for us. We would rather be doing <laughs> other things. So it'd be great if you could speed this process up. And that's where I'm hoping I can get some more feedback from you guys. I have a survey here. One day, hopefully, I'll have all the metrics so I don't have to ask you. You know, like Suzanne, I can see. I can't see yet. So I have this survey. And then maybe one day, maybe next year, I can actually see these through some instrumentation. But in the meantime, I really highly encourage you to check out the survey if you have the feature um, or you're, you know, you're already doing stuff with sharing and it's taking longer than you yeah. had hoped. So yes, you can help make Larry's 2024 or help him enter into 2024 with a smile on his face by giving us this feedback. So valuable. And with that, I'll let you get to it, Larry. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed our resolutions that we want to adhere to as we're entering into 2024 with great record access. So again, thank you for your time and we will see you all back here very soon. Thank you, everyone.